Hi, you guys. Of course, I can't stay away. There, what I'm going to do here, I think there's about six or seven tweets here I want to read to you guys because today, well, Sunday, it's probably Monday by now in Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu's uh, trial began today. And it, um, here are some relevant tweets uh, from Eric that I want to read to you related to that. After those six, seven tweets, I actually did a reading, I think, Friday night when I finally got to the Terrascope for Washington, D.C., and it was so weird. So I'm wondering if these tweets that I read aloud to you guys kind of um, fill in those blanks. So here we go. Okay, Eric tweets. Doesn't it seem weird that the Chinese government could be willing to track each citizen and score them on every behavior but not able to keep track of deadly viruses in their labs? If you guys didn't know, yeah. They have a Chinese uh, social media, social rating score for their citizens, which has everything to do with getting, you know, like loans at discounted, you know, with good interest rates. And as he says, it seems like there should be a square for appropriately managed deadly pathogens and refrain from spreading disinformation would be on there. Also, Russian disinformation operations target at Canadian forces, EFP in Latvia, with dangerous false coronavirus narratives in efforts to polarize local populations against NATO and Canada. Canadian-led NATO battle group in Latvia targeted by pandemic disinformation. This is from the CBC.ca, their broadcasting company. An Israeli bank laundering money to China for an attack on Israel? Oh boy, this is going to be more sticky a situation than normal. Nevertheless, it's time. He's quoting his own tweet from May 1st. I want to tell you that this bank, H-A-P-O-A-L-I-M, um, that's involved with Mnuchin. Mnuchin, I think, has been under investigation with his ties to that bank and even perhaps being in the White House or in the Oval Office with a member of that bank or on behalf of that bank talking to Donald. I could be wrong, but pay attention to this bank. So this tweet he's quoting, Israeli's bank H is going to have to do some explaining about 16 wire transfers that originated at H branches in Israel and ended with $266,000 in the Bank of China. Accounts of the alleged leader of a group called the Palestinian Islamic Jihad. On Thursday, U.S. District Judge Shira S. of Manhattan ruled that Bank of China, as the defendant in a politically charged suit brought by the family of the victim of a 2000 bombing in Tel Aviv, is entitled to depose a witness from Bank H despite the Israeli bank's arguments that the testimony would violate Israel's bank secrecy laws. Eric, laundering Iranian and Syrian money through Israel's largest bank to a terrorist leader's account at Bank of China sure looks bad, especially when Donald Trump also owed Bank of China $62 million. That came out a few weeks ago, and it just didn't gain any traction, but here we go. Eric, it sure looks like the world has been waiting for Benjamin Netanyahu to go on trial before other heads of state we go into the bar barrel. Strap in. He quotes Jay Coleman. The former Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea has been arrested and taken in for questioning over alleged misappropriation and corruption involving the purchase of two generators from Israel. From Zev Shalev. Israel is, of course, a pluralistic democracy, which is why the quote from the then leader of the left-leaning Labor Party leader, Isaac Herzog, was so jarring. As Eric Garland points out on podcast, of course other Israeli politicians knew. Election Eve warning to Netanyahu. Recently there have again been reports of Israeli leaders interfering in the elections through overseas proxies. I call on Netanyahu to instruct those close to him to make sure no damage is done. Isaac Herzog on November 20, 2016. Eric Mueller wanted to know if Trump's campaign was infiltrated by an Israeli agent. 
Kushner and Flynn's first order of business was changing a UN vote on Israel. Time to discuss the elephant in the room. Now, having read those tweets, look at this telescope. It's like it's frozen. It's so bizarre. See, I tell you guys I'm taking a break, and of course what happens? The camera's rolling. God help me. But I love you guys anyway. I did the telescope for the new moon today for my ZQT peeps, for all of us. It was... You know, oftentimes I do these telescopes, you guys, and the different parts, the 12 parts, they talk to each other. There's interactions. Things are happening. This telescope over Washington, D.C. is kind of stale. It's not moving. Things are not moving. Putin's house always has a gig going on, if not two. But we see masterful stuff having here, here, like on the angles. There's nothing. I'm going to show you this really quickly. On the ascendant things giving life to this chart, here we go with Mercury retrograde. Reinvention, like something is on hold. But this is also Donald. He had this here in the fourth house last time, reinventing an idea. But this part of the chart, it's all sensory. I just don't know what to make of it. There is zero Kim Jong-un again. Um... I think Donald got dumped by Putin. Um, this is weird, you guys. This is weird. So let's just go through it. The skies over Washington, D.C. in the first house of identity. A grand trine and blessings. Vital. Okay. That's odd. That's just odd to me. It's just an element. It's... It, actually, it's not even an element. It's an aspect. A grand trine are these big blue lines. So there's aspects. This is for a new moon in Gemini. Usually a new moon, you have energy moving right away going, especially this new moon. No, we're just a grand trine. That's how we're defined. What? The house of secrets. Fire and desire. Now... This matched the telescope for we, for us. Hidden desires. But ours were not more hidden. It was more of a retreat to reflect on our personal desires. This, when I put this out, what are the secrets? Fire and desire. Weird. In the 11th house here, hopes, friends, innovation, science. Um, usually I would see like MBS, kind of the intermediate, like between Russia and North Korea, um, helping out with stuff. We just have the air element. I mean, sure it's communicating, but who, what? What's crowning Washington, D.C.? Now this. The Grand Cross Provo Provoker. This is Donald. He recently had this down here, I think, last week. Being provoked. So he's provoking a lot of stuff in Washington, D.C., and nobody's reacting. In the ninth house, Putin's house, lands far away. We just have some water. We're sensing. Okay. I've never seen this house just doing nothing. And I don't want to say that these things are not anything because we can't have a horoscope, telescope without the elements, but I'm used to a very dynamic chart in Washington, D.C. I mean, maybe it's Labor Day weekend and nobody's here, and that's why. This is interesting. This area is shared resources, what you and I have, life and death, transformation, taxes, other people's money. 
Things that are taboo. Investigators, espionage. Um, this is the eighth house. Endings and beginnings. Reversed. Um, our shared resources are having a problem starting and finish. It's like a dud. Things have ground to a halt. This is the new moon with Mercury clipping away at Mercury pace, speed. This area partnerships, marriage, you know, uh, business partnerships, friendships. The 11th house of friends. Okay, so we go to this 11th house here. We have air. I, it's like ghost town. This area has to do with public servants, investigations, our military. Um, sixth house routine. It belongs here. Nothing is happening. Fifth house of the sun represents the photos. We have, oh, fifth house of creativity. That's what the fifth house does. Love and creativity, children. We have Pluto and Jupiter and Saturn there. Fourth house, roots, our home, how we defend ourselves. This is interesting. Well, we have Aquarius. We have a sign for Aquarius. I know. Okay. That's at the root of the USA chart. The only thing I can think of is the moon in Aquarius is we, the people. We're represented by Aquarius. The sign of Aquarius is over here. It rules this. What is going on? I never draw these cards. The third house of communications. This is the real estate that Gemini owns. Pluto, transformation. So these are the comms. These are how we reason and talk with one another. Documents, electronic transmissions, contracts. Pluto, transformation. This is in the fifth house of the sun, Pluto. Uh, so maybe changing communications? I don't understand what's going on. The second house, income gains values. We have Libra there. We have the fourth house, roots. This is the only dynamic card out of all of these. This is the only one that's going to have an arrow going to here. Income gains going to the fourth house of U.S. defenses, Aquarius, we the people. I mean, what is going on in D.C.? I will write these down and throw the tarot cards for this, but this is like came to a standstill. I did not expect this at all. 